Hello, and welcome back to Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion. This week, we welcome Dr. Stephanie Ryan to the show. She is the author of Let's Learn About Chemistry, and we'll be talking about teaching science to children. But first, we look at a new study suggesting that clay, not water, may be hidden under the icy south pole of Mars. We're also going to examine the radio galaxy Centaurus A in a new light and look up at Saturn during a close-ish approach to Earth. New examinations of radar reflections seen on Mars in 2018 suggest these features may be the result of clay, not underground lakes, near the south pole of the Red Planet. When radar images of the south pole of Mars were recorded by the Mars Express orbiter three years ago, researchers suggested that radar reflections might be the result of underground water supplies. Now, this was an intriguing possibility. A trio of new studies, however, finds that clay under the surface, not water, may in fact be responsible for the data seen by researchers. Astronomers using the Event Horizon Telescope have carried out the most detailed observations ever seen of the radio galaxy Centaurus A. Researchers detailed the source of the jets emanating from the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. Astronomers suggest that examination of this galaxy at shorter wavelengths might produce an image similar to that seen in 2019 of the supermassive black hole in M87. That historic image was taken by the exact same network of radio telescopes. On the night of Monday, the 2nd of August, Saturn and Earth made their closest approach to each other for this year. This offered amateur astronomers a chance to view the ringed planet at its closest and at its brightest. The rings are also now currently aligned at around 18 degrees from edge on as seen from Earth, offering stunning views of the rings And the moon on Monday night also stayed hidden until later in the evening. If you missed this close encounter, Saturn is still shining brightly in the southern sky anytime after sunset for most sky watchers in the northern hemisphere. Looking deep into the universe, we see backwards in time. And the oldest light in the universe holds secrets to how everything around us will, one day, end. Meanwhile, stars, planets, and galaxies dance in an intricate ballet, occasionally giving birth to life. We are a fledgling species, just beginning to visit other worlds. We are a way for the universe to understand itself. The Cosmic Companion strives to bring the universe down to Earth, and we depend on your help to make it happen. For information on subscriptions and ways to donate to this program, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net. Thank you. Viewing Saturn is one of the greatest ways to share science with children. And speaking of which, our next guest, Dr. Stephanie Ryan, is an expert in teaching parents and educators how to encourage a lifelong love of science and children. This week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, we're happy to be joined by Dr. Stephanie Ryan. She is the CEO of Ryan Education Consulting, and she is the author of Let's Learn About Chemistry, 
a book about teaching chemistry, the central science to children. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. Thanks for having me. It seems that children are natural scientists. They want to know about the universe around us. Why is the sky blue? What are the stars? How come vinegar and baking soda does this crazy stuff when you mix it together? So what is it about us as a species, especially as children, that draws us to science? Well, I think as children, we're always just looking to figure out the world around us, right? Because as a child, you don't know anything about your world. Everything is brand new. And so as parents, we'll be like, oh, wow, the kid is really just throwing their food on the floor over and over and over again. And that's kind of annoying, but they're looking at gravity. They're learning that I dropped this, this falls. They're learning that. <clears throat> And so like walking, it takes them several steps to like figure it out. And I think it's just them because they don't know anything. They're just so curious, like, wow, what's this? What's that? And the older we get, I think that a lot of adults lose that curiosity and they're like, I know this, I'm moving on. <laughs> right, right. And uh, you, you hit the next question is, why is it that so many, why, why is it that you think that so many people lose their sense of wonder as they get older? I think we beat it out of them <laughs> in school. Um, so I think that in school, you'll remember occasions where you missed something or you got an answer wrong on a test and you felt really dumb in the class. And I think that we tend to, at least when I was in school, it was, no, that's wrong. You got a 90 instead of a 95 or you failed, you did, you know, and the information is presented as, you know, a factor you don't. But like children walking, when they walk and they fall down, you don't go fail, you failed, <laughs> you, you're awful at this. You need to straighten your leg a little more. Like you encourage them along the way. And I think we should do that with science too. And I don't think we do. Cause I think if you ask a room of adults, like what their memories of science class were, they were that they didn't understand the facts and they, it scared them away. Right, right. And so what can parents do to, you know, encourage their kids to learn science? Point it out at home, wherever it is. So there's chemistry, biology, physics, astronomy, all of it happening all around you. And there are things you can talk about very simply with your kids. So I know a lot of parents think that it's, um, I don't know, chemistry uh, needs fancy chemicals in a lab. You don't need that. Um, when you cook every day, that's chemistry. Um, you grow a plant that's biology and some chemistry, because you're right, chemistry is the central science. <laughs> I'd say physics is in there too. But um, so you can do all this stuff at home and just point out what's going on around them so that it's not so much that here are a bunch of facts that might help you. It's here's the world. Can we explain some of this? Hmm. Hmm. And it seems... You know, this might be challenging, though, for parents who don't know much science on their own, you know, who have grown up not being encouraged to learn science and, you know, maybe spend their days as any number, you know, in any number of jobs that have nothing to do with science. So how, how can they especially, you know, get the tools they need to, to help encourage their kids? they can reach out and look online for the free resources that exist. So there are a lot of people, they're called science communicators, of which this podcast would be considered one. Um, science communicators share science with the public and some of them choose specifically to share it with kids. Um, and we often, I am one, I often say to the parent, like, here's a question you could ask. This is an extension you could do. And you find us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, they're all over the place. And if you learn with your kid, that's not you failing. That's not you getting an F on your parenting test. That is you learning next to your kid and showing them that learning is a lifelong endeavor and that you still do it too. Hmm. And, um, you know, so I guess, it, or do you think kids are naturally drawn towards chemistry or do you think it's 
do you, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, where do you start kids on science? You know? That's a great question. And I think that probably depends on the kid. Um, like my son is obsessed with learning about the human body and organ systems. He's like the only four year old I know that can draw an organ system because he showed interest and we just keep giving him the books and he loves it. So um, with him, I think we'll start biology. But um, I think that for most things, you can break most concepts into something simpler. Like solids, liquids, and gases. Those are things you can do around you. Talk about that. When they mix together, do they stay the same or do they change? Do they form layers or do they not? Like just teaching them these observational classifying skills um, and then supporting their claim with evidence. So it's more about the skills you're teaching and not necessarily the content. And I think that you can actually apply that to a lot of content. Hmm. And so, just go back a little bit, like to parents who don't have a science background themselves. You know, there is so much information out there. And, you know, I know this is going to be a shocker for some people, but not everything they put on YouTube is true. <laughs> so, how do parents without a science background separate the wheat from the chafe and figure out what? what is real out there and what's not? That's a great question. And I actually, when I post videos on TikTok, I'll have people leave a comment like, oh, please someone tell me if this really works or not. And I'm like, what? I'm a teacher putting my experiment on. Why would I make something up? But I get it. Like there's a lot of garbage out there that people try to do trickery. Um, I would say to those parents, look up a few videos and see if all the videos show the same reaction happening or the same kind of information. And then find some sources that say, like, why does that happen? Like, Google that. Um, or I always say, I, this is what I do in my daily life. I contact people. I ask questions. And so sometimes I'll tweet a researcher at a university about a question I have, and they'll tweet you back. Like, it doesn't hurt to ask. Like, get help. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one right there. Um <laughs> And so, you know, your book is, has some, you know, fabulous experiments in it for kids. Can you just give us a brief uh, sneak preview? Can you tell tell parents out there something fun they might do with their kids? That could be a wonderful yeah. experience. So the book itself is super fun. It's a game that is which of these is not like the other. And every page has different comparisons that helps teach chemistry to your kids. But the cool thing is, is it uses their toys and things from their house that they've seen before. So they can do that. And then with your child, you can set up your own grid of four, which of this thing is not like the other, or you can go on a walk. You could look at leaves, which tree of these is not like the other. You can use that with anything because it's really that observational skill. Um, and the best part, I think, of the book is that if your kid's not giving you an answer that has anything to do with chemistry, that is totally fine. Sometimes the preschoolers I read to, they'll say, oh, you can't eat this one and you can eat the rest. And it's like, that is a valid response with evidence. Like, I like it. Let's move to the next one. And then over time, they do learn. But at that moment, it's not important to force a vocab word on them because that's not important at that moment. It's more about the engaging with the child and the parents and using the world around them to help them explain something. Hmm. And it would seem, I mean, if, it would seem that, you know, some kids might even be encouraged by, you know, being asked to make up their own categories of things and, you know, how you, um, you know, and how, how they would perceive for instance, differences and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, it gives them agency too, that you care about their opinion, which is really important for kids to see that, wow, I said something that worked and I found something that was different than what my mom and dad saw. That's really cool. Um, but it really does, it teaches them to justify claims with evidence, which is so important. Um, but also the, the comparison and contrast skill, like being able to do that's important too. Um, the other fun thing about the book is that it pairs really well with anything you want to do at home. 
So like you want to make s'mores and build a solar oven. Cool. You could talk about chemical and physical changes. That's a section in it, you know, and you can pair it with anything you want to do in your kitchen. And, and there's actually, you know, it's just so much chemistry that, you know, does, I mean, cooking is chemistry. Um, and um, so how just can we use these connections like between, you know, chemistry and cooking and physics, you know, to help build um, a worldview for our kids, a science-centered worldview, and how do we encourage that? Um, I think by doing just that, just highlighting it every time you see it, um, anything that has that overlap, remind them that that's it. Like looking at patterns is math. That's actually a math skill, even though you're not using any numbers. Um, things like that, you're just pointing it out that it's not this unachievable thing that we think it is, that it's all around us, just all the time. Hmm. And what sort of role does, and you touched on this a couple minutes ago, but what sort of role does encouragement play in helping children learn especially science that's a great question i only have my own personal experiences with this um not necessarily the research to back that up um but i i would say that the more you encourage children the more they keep doing it so if you suddenly shoot them down so for example my son and i were making popsicles last year he was three and i asked him what i needed to do to the liquid to get it to turn into a popsicle. And he said, let's put it in the oven. And I wanted to like put my palm on my forehead and be like, are you serious? Uh, but I bit my tongue and I said, well, let's try it. Cause I had nothing to lose. Like, let's try it. You know, and what's, we did what's it with water. It's gonna happen, right, right. Yeah, let's we'll see what happens. Um, so nothing happens, right? It doesn't freeze. And so then I let him make that determination that it didn't work on his own. And by doing that, he owned that information and was able to process it in the way he needed to. And then he was able to, okay, let's try outside. Well, it evaporated. Let's try the refrigerator. Well, it's cold, but it's not cold enough. What could make it colder? Um, and so then he finally, on his own, came with this conclusion. And then months later, it started sleeting outside. Mm. And he said, Mommy, do you think it's cold enough that it's going to turn into a solid? And I was like, I never had to say that to you ever. You just did that on your own because of this one activity we did months ago. And so because he was so positive with that experience that he was able to build it himself, it really stuck with him more than it would have been if I had just said, no, silly, put it in the freezer, you know. So I think there's definitely something there. Absolutely, absolutely. And so are there, what sort of resources are there out there for parents who may want to take, let's say, the next step and um, teach their kids, let's say, especially chemistry? Yeah, there are a lot of people out there, like myself, who have Instagram accounts dedicated to sharing activities with parents and explaining why they work. Uh, my personal one on Instagram is Let's Learn About Science. That's my TikTok as well. And I post the videos to show what you need to do. Um, and then I answer questions if people have them. Like, why didn't this one work? Somebody used uh, plant-based food coloring and it didn't work as well. And now I'm going to look into the chemistry of plant-based food coloring because I didn't know the answer. Um, and so we're going to communicate back and forth like this. And you get more answers that way. And there are websites with blogs dedicated to it. So if you just search for STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics activities, or STEAM, that includes art, you can find a lot of pages like that. But if you need to, you, you can definitely send me a, a quick message and I can point you in some directions. And all in all, chemistry sets. 
Yay or, <laughs> yay or nay. <laughs> um, so there's some really great subscription ones that I really love. So Mel Chemistry is fantastic. It sends these, it sends you just enough of each chemical to run an experiment a few times, tells you exactly what you need to do, and it also explains what happened so that the parent who is working with the child can understand what's going on. And at no point do you ever feel like, oh, wow, I don't know the answer to this. I can't do this. Um, you feel guided along the way. And then KiwiCo has really great crates for um, four-year-olds and up. They're just wonderful as well. So I say yes. I think they're great, but obviously with supervision. <laughs> And so where can parents go to learn more about what you're doing and how they can teach their kids science? Yeah, I have a website. It's letslearnaboutscience.com. Um, that is where you find all of my other ventures. <laughs> <laughs> That's super. Well, thanks so much for being on the show, Stephanie. It was great talking with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. And that was Dr. Stephanie Ryan, CEO of Ryan Education Consulting and author of Let's Learn About Chemistry. Next week on the 10th of August, we're gonna welcome Dr. Jonathan Lenine, Chair of the Astronomy Department at Cornell University to the show and he's going to be telling us all about the volcanoes of Venus. So make sure to join us then. Visit with us each week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion as we bring the cosmos down to Earth with scientists directly into your homes with fun, informative interviews. Subscribe to our VIP newsletter to see every episode of this show one day first. Now, we depend on support from viewers just like you. For ways to help support this program, including VIP subscriptions, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net forward slash support. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and keep your wonder alive. If you enjoyed this episode of Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, check out every episode of the show at thecosmiccompanion.tv. Also, please download and share the episode on YouTube, Facebook video, or your favorite podcast provider. For more details on space and astronomy news, please visit thecosmiccompanion.com or thecosmiccompanion.net.